Hello and welcome to Toya's Objects of Desire. Now my husband is here in spirit because I have been pilfering through his drawers, his wardrobes, his possessions to find this week's Objects of Desires. Now my husband is home from the USA in five days, so next weekend we resume back to to normal broadcasting of Robert and Toya being in the world famous kitchen together. It's been a fantastic week. I'm on tour with the Anthem Tour and very soon, in a matter of days, I start the Billy Idol Arena Tour as well. So it's been a wonderful, good and busy time. And while I remember, we have a really, really funny Sunday lunch waiting for you tomorrow. It's silly, it's hysterical, and it's Chesney in the kitchen. So this week, I wanted to flag up my husband's deep passion for the bumblebee. Now, we live in a house that is the countryside at the back, but town at the front. So we can live with windows and doors open and we get so many giant bumblebees coming into the house that I spend a lot of the summer running around this house and our conservatories with a butterfly net trying to remove the bumblebees so they can have a long and productive life. This one unfortunately got stuck in a room without us knowing and he's known as the eternal bee of Pershaw and he lives just off a kitchen table on a dresser. We really adore bumblebees and they mean so much to us as people who live on the edge of the countryside. To just see them being so busy is a real inspiration. Now, King Alfred might have been inspired by the tenacity of a spider weaving a web. For me, I'm inspired by the tenacity of the bumblebee as they go as they gather their pollen and create honey. And we've got a wall running along the side of our house, an exposed wall, which is completely hollow now with masonry bees. Now they're not popular in towns and anywhere around buildings because they strip out the inner lining, the inner cavity between brick walls. But we don't give a because we just love the presence of these bees. Very rarely do we get swarms, but I've lived here now for 21 years. I've seen two swarms and you can always see them coming. It is like a cloud. It's as if there's an eclipse of the sun. They're very, very large and they are incredibly noisy and they block out the light. And the first swarm I saw, I was a I was sunbathing in the garden and I thought, what's that noise? And I looked up and I thought, what's that black cloud? And then I ran. I absolutely ran. And they gathered uh, on our outer back door and we had to get a specialist to come and collect them. And they come and collect them in a box. They put the box around the kind of swarming bees and then they bang the bees and they drop into the box and they take them away. Thus, the swarm is saved. I think in recent times, the power of the bee has been related to Manchester and the awful events around the Manchester arena, arena bombing. And that's when the Manchester people came forward into the world in an even greater way than the Industrial Revolution and historically this hard working city and the B represented, we will not be beaten, we will not be downtrodden. This event will not stop us fighting for the rights of families and children and everyone in the world. And at that point, I think my husband discovered the bee as something he wanted to look at on a daily uh, experience. He wanted bees around him all day to remind him not only of the strength of the people of Manchester, but also for the strength of the human race. So he, he's a very funny creature, my husband, because he can't look at certain things without his tummy suffering. Um, he can't look at fish at all, and sometimes he can't look at insects. But the bee, I think, has been aversion therapy on certain um, possessions we have. Now, this is Craig Fellow's print. God, we love his work. It's so superb. And now my husband 
I can have things around the house like this, which is an Oxfam Christmas bauble, but we put all these on our gifts to friends. We just take them onto the boxes and just give them away as gifts when we're giving birthday presents to friends. And that is just absolutely gorgeous. So I started to slowly introduce the bee into my husband's life, like a man brooch which I love to see him wear. He's still getting his head around man brooches. And then of course, the bee cufflinks, which he loves. So I've got him into those. And slowly his aversion of looking at certain insects is lessening. So these are olive or kind of canape picks. No one quite knows how to use them because they're incredibly heavy. The top half is so heavy. So they use them and then they usually drop them on the floor. Um, when I was doing my acoustic tour earlier this year, I was in Haywards Heath and I was in a, a, a very brilliant vegetarian restaurant. Can't remember the name of it. It has a black awning on the high street. And this was... <laughs> Now, this is probably a wasp, but not a bee, looking at that. But I just thought, I have to get this for my husband. And I wasn't sure if he'd be able to handle it. Uh, but he does. I found this on his desk. So very happy to find that and that he's living with it. At Christmas, last Christmas, I got him the bee salt and pepper set. So he can have his salt and pepper on the lunch table. But I've got more brooches and I sneak these onto his jacket. Now we have a friend, um, uh, uh, Colin David, who is an artist. And Colin will take pretty basic suits from Zara or even from um, Marks and uh, m &S, let's say, and he will alter them. He will take them apart, swap over bits so that they become hybrids of other designers. And his suits are absolutely amazing because he takes the high street designs and turns them into high art. So when Robert is wearing one of those suits, I can sneak these onto the lapels. He never notices. And he's walking around with bees on his lapels, which I love. And these are garden ornaments. I remember I gave them to him last Christmas and I could see him deciding whether he's gonna be able to live with them. But again, I found these in his office, so he can live with them. And I do a lot of artwork, like the one at the back, which is crude, naive folk art in its style. But this is my husband as the busy working bee. And I created these characters called the love bees. So the love bees represent Robert and myself, represent lovers, valentines, people who just want to be silly and affectionate. And I sometimes send these out to people with be my one and only. It's, they go down really, really well. People love them. And I love naive art. I absolutely adore it. One day I will own a Maud Lewis. I've promised myself that. So that is Toya's Objects of Desire, a little insight into my husband, Robert Fripp, and his passion for bees. And before I go, I just want to read something to you. If you're not up on bees, because you might not be, it might not have occurred to you to be up on bees. Since ancient times, bees, especially honeybees, have been seen to symbolize industry, to bring messages from the divine, to set an example, to be associated with the soul, and to bring the blessing of fertility. Images of honeybees and their hives are present on ancient artifacts associated with goddesses, religions, and ancient cities. Bees appear in ancient religious texts. So let's see the bee in a different light. It's industrious, it's beautiful, it's tenacious, and it brings us honey. So everyone, thank you for joining me and see you tomorrow for a really crazy Sunday lunch. And next week, Robert is back in the kitchen. Yay! From Toya. <laughs>